Hi, I'm David and I'm a software developer at Synergy Codes. Today we'll talk about Angular and React, ecosystems, analogies and differences. And at the end, we'll try to answer the question, which one should you choose for your project? Let's start with a bit of history. AngularJS was created in 2010 as a side project by one of the Google employees. It introduced two-way data binding, which was a huge improvement to web development. It allows developers to move noticeable portion of business logic to the front-end side of the app. The main goal was to allow developers to create advanced front-end apps. But there were a lot of issues with refreshing the view. Digest cycle errors became a nightmare for many developers around the world. This was the dark side of two-way data binding. Many apps were having significant performance issues. Since 2016, Angular has been releasing new versions twice a year. But old AngularJS will have LTS status until the end of 2021. It is important to know that Angular was updating the real DOM tree with each change, and this approach was not perfect in terms of performance. With version 9, a switch was made. Ivy compiler with incremental DOM became a default renderer for Angular apps that improved performance and memory cost. In general, Angular is putting emphasis on modularization and good architecture. Angular is closely bound with TypeScript and RxJS. Its ecosystem is maintained and developed mostly by Google. React was created by Facebook in 2011. It was first used for showing the news feed and year later in an Instagram app. React was built around one-way data flow approach, passing everything from top to bottom. It was created to support fast, simple and scalable development process with easy control of application state, which also made it easier to test the thing. React has been an open source library since 2013. It is constantly developed. It has reached the centralized ecosystem with multiple providers for some functionalities. React is using Virtual DOM for optimizing the rendering process. This is one of the key differences between React and Angular. This feature, combined with focusing on one-way data flow, made a huge difference in app's performance. React uses JSX for defining component templates and is usually used with Redux. Angular, on the other hand, is tightly coupled with RxJS. Of course, you can write React app without Redux and minimize usage of RxJS in Angular. You can also use Redux with Angular. These are not strict rules, more of a most common environment setups. Both technologies have a solution for mobile development. Angular has native script and there is React Native on the other side. If you use Angular, you will get base functionalities out of the box. Things like routing, forms, HTTP client or dependency injection are just there. This makes Angular a framework, which provides proven patterns for doing things. You can do them in a different way if you really want to, but it usually makes no sense to add such complexity. React is more of a UI building purpose library. It is light and fast. Each thing like routing, HTTP requests or forms have to be added to the project separately. This approach brings more freedom and flexibility. Each problem can be solved in multiple ways using many different third-party libraries from various providers. With Angular, you can implement a two-way communication using inputs and outputs. All components have state. They can also inject services and, for example, NGRX global stores. In case of React, we are dealing with unidirectional data flow, in many cases bound with Redux. You can have both stateful or stateless components. Using the second approach for presentational ones makes them smaller and easier to read. The components have only inputs, called props, and in order to send an event to the parent component, we need to pass some handler method down and use it in a child. It may seem a bit cumbersome at first, but when you use Redux and utilize selectors and actions, the whole machinery starts to look really nice. Dependency injection is a most popular implementation of inversion of control rule. It is about providing dependencies in such a way that enables them to be replaced very easily. Thanks to that approach, we can create code that is not tightly coupled, hence easy to understand, test, maintain and extend. 
Many frameworks are providing IOC containers and DI feature. Angular is one of them, and this is also a key difference between it and React. If you want to achieve same functionality in React, you need to get one of the third-party libraries, like Inversify, and manage dependencies yourself. Let's see how it looks in Angular. Here we have a service with injectable decorator. This tells Angular to register this service under app service token and make it accessible through DI. Injecting is simple. We pass it as an argument to a constructor. And app service instance is accessible inside app component. It is public, so we can use it in a template like this and see the text rendered on the screen. In Angular, each component has 8-step lifecycle, and you can hook into each of the steps by implementing dedicated interface. It looks like this. There are three hooks that are fired only once within the component lifecycle, plus engine destroy, which basically ends the component's life. The four remaining hooks are called with each digest cycle. In React, the lifecycle is a bit simpler and consists of three phases. Component did mount is like engine init. Component did update is similar to engine changes, and component will unmount is an equivalent of engine destroy. Same behaviors can be achieved with use effect. Let's take a look at the example. Here we can see all the interfaces implemented by the component, and for each hook we get one method. Most of them are not accepting any parameters. Only engine changes gets an object with all the changes made to the inputs. In React file on the right we see examples with use effect. The one with no params is fired once after the component was mounted, so it's like engine init. The method returned from that hook will be fired within destroying the component, and the second use effect below depends on counter value, so it will be fired each time counter value changes. In Angular we have ng-content, content-related hooks and decorators that let us get instances of the components passed down as a content in a nice and easy way. In React we can access content passed down using children prop. Let's move to the examples, but before we jump to the content projection, let's see how to output a list of elements and render things conditionally. In Angular, we have array of strings as an input, and in the template, we use ng4, which is one of the so-called structural directives, to iterate through the array. Each element gets stored in the item variable, and inside this div, we can define the template for each item. Right now, we are only printing it out. In React, the same task requires less lines of code. In JSX, we just call data.map and return proper template for each of the items in the array. Regarding conditional rendering, in Angular, we have to use another one of the structural directives, this time ngif. We pass the condition to the directive, and when it's truthy, we get to see the element in the DOM. In React, we take advantage of the way logical operators work. If our condition is false, evaluation will stop here and nothing will be rendered. But if it is true, we evaluate the latter part and parent component gets rendered. Now let's check out content projection. In both app components we see usage of components with content projection. In both cases we have this parent with content component and inside of it we put child content component and some other div with text inside. Let's take a look at this child content components first. In both cases, it contains just some text wrapped in a div. Now that we know what should be rendered, let's check how it looks in the browser. We can see children passed down and first row is the text from our child content component. The second one is defined here in app.js. Both get rendered inside parent with content component. Same thing happens in Angular app. In parent with content component in React, we can see children prop just rendered into the div. Additionally, we have a use effect outputting children array with each change. In the console, there is only one appearance, with two elements, as expected, child content and some div. In Angular template, we have only ng-content tag, which tells Angular to project past content in that place. Apart from that, we have two lifecycle hooks related to content and we are accessing child component using content children decorator. We can see in the console that we have reference to component instance and that both child content component and the div with text are rendered inside parent with content component. 
at the time when Angular apps were suffering from performance issues, React took a huge slice of the market because it was faster thanks to virtual DOM and unidirectional data flow. Since that time, Angular made a huge progress regarding performance and recently started using incremental DOM. This is another key difference between the two technologies. With Virtual DOM, we have a DOM tree, some changes occur, new Virtual DOM tree is created for the change, trees are compared and div is applied to the real DOM. This approach is fast, but it requires creating a lot of in-memory DOM trees and presence of the interpreter to compare them. In incremental DOM, each component is represented by the set of instructions, so we know at compile time which ones will be used and which ones won't. Therefore, we can omit the unused ones when building a bundle, and this fact significantly reduces memory usage. No multiple in-memory DOM trees, no in-memory interpreter. Here you can see visualization of the memory usage in both approaches. Incremental DOM is not allocating any memory when there is no change in the UI. We discussed many differences between Angular and React. Now let's face the final question. Which one to choose? At the end, both let you build really complex apps and basically do anything. If you need good performance on the mobile devices, it may be better to choose Angular. But to be honest, I think that it's the only purely technical decision driver here. What I believe are the most important drivers are not related to similarities and differences between Angular and React. It is more about what your team can do and how does your project roadmap looks like. How experienced is your team? If you have only senior front-end devs, I'd say choice of technology doesn't really matter that much. If you have more people with less experience, it may be better to choose React, because of lower entrance level and a lot less boilerplate code. React gives faster start and better pace at the beginning. Unless your team consists of people with backend experience, they will like the more structured Angular way of doing things. Which one do they already know? Stick to this one, unless one of the goals of the project is to learn something new. How long will the project last? Will it have to be maintained for a long time? How stable is the team expected to be? React may be better for quick development of smaller apps, maybe some POCs or MVPs for idea validation. Stable team, which delivers a solution and moves on to the next project, can achieve tremendous pace of development. Angular, on the other hand, will match a bit better with long-term projects where a lot of people come and go, because it is a framework. With a given structure that everyone knows, you get a more stable environment. If none of this works for you, remember that there is also Vue and few other frameworks, but maybe let's leave that topic for the next time. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed your break with Synergy Cafe. You can find all the links attached in the description of this video. Feel free to reach out to us in case of any questions. Have a nice day and see you soon!